continuing along the main road through the village centre, you now find yourself in Stoke Road. The first building of note to be encountered here is one of the two more modern churches in the village. The Catholic Church, which rather disturbingly, is situated on part of the site once occupied by the village abattoir. Next to the Catholic Church, the Who Carpet Centre. During the 1960s and 70s, this was a grocery mini-market. And further back still, it was the Victory Pub, having been closed down sometime during the 1940s. Next door to the Carpet Centre, the more recently built Red Cross Hall. And this house was at one time a butcher's shop. In 1858, permission was given for a tunnel with a tramway under the road here in order to shift clay for brick making to the kilns on the opposite side of the road. The brick earth being dug out from this area known as the Who Pit. Part of this pit area is also an orchard. In 1997, some of this land was used for further development. With access being gained via Bells Lane. Travelling further along the Stoke Road now, away from the village centre, a more rural scene develops. White House Farm, owned by the Vigin family, at one time suppliers of wool and fruit, as well as small-scale milk producers selling to the local residents. another of the village's residential care homes for the elderly, originally built as the senior school of the two in the village and during the 1960s acting as the junior school in conjunction with the other schools in the village. Looking southwards here across the fields towards the River Medway, you will find the Abbot's Court Road. The large house seen in the distance here is now the fifth of the village's nursing homes for the elderly, but up until the 16th century this abode was a monastery. After the 16th century it became the home to a number of dignitaries, one of whom being the cricketer Tom Crawford. Falling into dereliction during the 1970s, it was renovated during the early part of the 1980s to become a hotel before becoming the nursing home of the present day. In the 15th century Abbot's Court was known as Little Who, for located here during that period was the largest manor house on the peninsula. The hundred, part of the name Hundred of Who, derives from the manorial system of the time, which dictated that for the convenience of administrative and tax collection purposes, the manors for each given county be grouped in hundreds. Further on down the Abbot's Court Road, and here the location for another long gone industry being that of gravel excavation. The gravel was again transported by rail across these fields and down to the shoreline of the River Medway. The track would have run behind where these buildings now stand. The gravel being processed in a very large crushing machine, which when refined would be shipped out via the river.
and 100 yards into the Vicarage Lane end of the Abbots Court Road. 60 years ago, this old timber yard used to be where the village fire engine was kept. And subsequently has become the site for further housing development. Rejoining the Stoke Road and travelling to the far end of it will bring you to Belluncle and Belluncle Farmhouse. This having been rebuilt after the original was destroyed by fire in 1905. The old disused bridge here used to be part of Stoke Road itself. Beneath it used to run the Chattenden Naval Tramway Line, which during World War I carried supplies down to an airship station and munitions factory at Kingsnorth, here seen in the distance. The line to Kingsnorth was closed in 1940. Kings North was also the site of the Berry Wiggins oil refinery, which enjoyed much success here since commencing operations in 1931. Closed during the early part of the 1990s, the area is now used mainly as a business estate, with remnants of the refinery still remaining. Despite the industry in this part of Hu, there still remains much open countryside, with more than enough to satisfy the keenest of naturalists. Lying close by to the King's North Industrial Estate and Power Station, the paddle steamer Medway Queen is moored here at Damhead Creek. Many years ago a common sight on the river, this vessel took part in the Dunkirk campaign of World War II and is currently undergoing restoration here. Heading back inland again, and lying approximately one mile further on from Belluncle, an outlying part of Who known as North Street. This part of the village also remains largely unchanged. Taking the road back towards Belluncle again will bring you to a rather insignificant looking road bridge near to which once stood the Belluncle Halt railway station. This was one of the stops along the line of the old Hundred of Who passenger rail service. A downward bound train from here would have taken you to Stoke, All Hallows and the Isle of Grain. Upward bound from Belluncle by rail would have seen you next pass under the old Roper's Farm Bridge. Now known as Roper's Lane Byway, this bridge spans both where the old naval tramway line used to run, as well as the main line, which today is used solely for freight, carried to and from the gravel works and container port on the Isle of Grain.
the old farm buildings here were demolished many years ago. No more than a third of a mile away, Roper's Lane runs as a link between the Ratcliffe Highway from the Stoke Road. And has in more recent times been subject to alterations in the form of a new roundabout built at the junction of Roper's Lane and the Ratcliffe Highway.